All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about Yamaha. Uh, we're going to talk about what is whole home audio and, and why do you want it? What's so important about it and why is it such a cool thing today? Uh, we'll spend some time on music streaming and the app control. We're going to get in a little bit of detail on the MusicCast app. Not super deep, but it's going to make you pretty dangerous. And uh, we'll give you a few tips in there on how to do the basic functions of it. We'll talk a little bit about voice control, and then we'll kind of finish it up with uh, different configurations, different product categories that are capable of MusicCast, different unique applications that uh, MusicCast has with those uh, different products. And then we'll uh, finish up probably the last uh, five or so minutes with uh, some questions. We'll do a recap and uh, send you on your way. So again, thank you all for uh, your interest in stopping by and learning a little bit about Yamaha, a little bit more about the products. Well, first, it can't be a Yamaha presentation without a story about Mr. Yamaha. Um, his name is Tarakasu Yamaha. He was a mechanical engineer and uh, built his first radio organ in 1887. Now, it's kind of... Um, he was a mechanical engineer, and in the time back in the late 1800s, uh, musical instruments were really valuable, and there was a local school that had a reed organ, and they're very rare, and as only institutions really had them, they weren't in consumers' homes. And this one happened to break, and it needed some repair. Well, the only person in town that was probably the most capable was Mr. Yamaha, being an engineer. So he took a look at it, and uh, he fixed it up and got it running. Well, that kind of sparked a fire within him, and uh, he just became infatuated with it and decided, well, I kind of like this thing. I'm going to build my own. So back in 1887, he built his first reed organ. And then that um, a few years later, he established the Nippon Gaki Corporation. That's uh, Japan music. Nippon Gaki is Japan music. And that's the company that uh, we know today. Uh, we'll skip all the pianos and organs. The first upright piano was right around 1900, went to the World's Fair in 1902 with the grand piano, and that's it, a lot of stuff has happened over the last 130-some years. Uh, the first uh, hi-fi products, since that's kind of what I'm working in the consumer audio division, and that's what we're learning about here today, uh, was uh, it was a record player amplifier. Uh, it was a... a record player in 1954, but the interesting uh, part about this, it's the world's very first product with the term hi-fi on the label. Now, at the time, there was hi-fi vinyl and hi-fi music and hi-fi amps, but no one ever put it on a piece of product. It was just a, a thing, and uh, it's just kind of interesting trivia that Yamaha was the first product with the name hi-fi on the label, and that was 1954. Then you scoot up to the, the mid-70s, and that's when Yamaha came into the United States with, uh, with their first audio products, the old CA-1000, uh, CA-800 uh, classics. They're still revered today after all these years. And we've been doing a lot of innovation, a lot of neat things over that since that time, since the mid-70s. Um, you know, kind of what we're going to focus on today is MusicCast. So back in uh, 2015, so a little over five years ago, uh, we introduced MusicCast. And that's what we're going to focus on today because that uh, talks about whole home audio. So that's kind of the milestone for this presentation. So that's kind of the history of Mr. Yamaha and the Yamaha Corporation. Uh, but what's that mean today? Where's Yamaha at now? Well, Yamaha is a music company. Remember that Nippon Gaki? Japan music. Yamaha is the largest musical instrument manufacturer in the world. You know, in fact, 25% of all musical instruments in the world are have the Yamaha brand name on them. I mean, that's that's spectacular. That's what we do. We do music. We do sound. Uh, we're the largest educator of music. You know, we want to have more music makers. So we have over 7 million people have been through Yamaha music schools throughout the world. Uh, we're an industry leader in live sound and concert sound with mixing boards, PA equipment, um, speakers, uh, you name it. The biggest uh, traveling concerts are all just loaded up with Yamaha Pro Gear. And then Yamaha is, uh, you kind of don't think about it. You think grand pianos and trombones and trumpets and violins and things like that. 
uh, you don't realize, you know, they're traditional instruments, but there's tons of innovation. So Yamaha is a leading innovator in our industry and it's uh, patents in uh, electronics. There are patents in um, construction and uh, the, the finish, uh, the, that gloss piano finish that you see on the grand pianos that you see on television, that's a patented process developed by Yamaha, you know, over a hundred years of experience with it. Uh, those are the types of things that, that we do. So that's the Yamaha, kind of the heritage. Now, what's that mean for you? Um, Yamaha is one of the most seen brands on television, and it's not because we buy 60-second Super Bowl ads. We, we don't. Uh, but you'll see Yamaha at every Super Bowl, most likely. During the halftime show, musical instruments will have the Yamaha logo on it. This is uh, the Rose Parade a few years back. Um, I mean, three quarters of the bands are using Yamaha drums with the logos. When college football starts out again soon, I hope, um, <laughs> we're going to have uh, the marching bands all with Yamaha. We're on primetime television, the late night shows, all the bands that are uh, on TV at night are using Yamaha musical instruments. And then, of course, more recently, the live streaming events that you're seeing from everyone's living rooms and things like that, and it's just loaded with Yamaha gear. So this is what Yamaha does. This is Yamaha's heritage, and this is our reputation. Uh, oh, yeah, and we make motorcycles, too. So it is uh, <laughs> Yamaha. It's a very diversified company. Uh, currently today, there are separate corporations. They started out kind of as one corporation back in the early 50s when motors started uh, to develop. Um, and today, Yamaha makes some of the best motorcycles, outboard motors, jet skis, uh, golf carts, uh, sporting goods, uh, tennis rackets, golf clubs, uh, extremely diverse company. Uh, but the thing that's common, the common thread through all of the the products that Yamaha makes. Everything that we make is made to enhance your life. It doesn't just support your life. You know, it's not like Kleenex or shoelaces or, you know, stuff that you need. Uh, this is all stuff that is fun, that helps you relax, helps you enjoy, and it just improves the quality of your life. And that's uh, what Yamaha does. That's across all products that we do. Everything is a quality product, uh, tops in their line, um, and it enhances your life. So that's about it for the Yamaha story. Um, just wanted to give you a picture of me. I don't know why, but you're supposed to do that in these webinars. I do not look like that person in the picture now. I have a nine week old beard and I haven't had a haircut in three months. So I do not look like that. So you won't recognize me going down the street. But this slide has an important email address. So if we don't get to your question today, or if you come up with a question when you're thinking about this afterwards, uh, we set up an email address. It's CA webinars. That's consumer audio webinars at yamaha.com. So you might want to jot that down just for future records. I'll show it up again at the end of the presentation, but it's CA webinars. If you have questions that didn't get answered, go ahead and shoot a question off to that. All right, let's get into, uh, let's talk about some whole home audio. Um, yeah, whole home audio has a long history. It's not just a new thing in the last five years. When I was in high school and my parents would leave for the afternoon or something like that, I had whole home audio because I cranked up my system in the bedroom and I could hear it throughout the whole house. Um, We've refined the whole home audio concept over the years. So today, we, we're we listening to music more than we ever have before. Uh, streaming services are just unbelievable. People are getting music, and they're listening to it all over the place, all in different areas of the home. It's not just in the listening room anymore. Um, I know people that on a Saturday afternoon, they'll put their phone, they'll turn on a streaming service, put their phone in their pocket, and they're gonna spend the whole afternoon, whether they go out in the garage messing around or if they're cleaning around the house or just doing stuff, they have the music with them playing through their telephone speakers in their, their pocket. So that's their version of whole home audio. I think we're gonna see with MusicCast, um, it's a little bit more refined. 
the MusicCast app, and we'll show you some more details on this a little bit later on, but uh, when it comes up, it, it's loaded with all the stream, all the common streaming services. So whatever your preference is, I, I think I have about eight, two, four, six. I have six of these services. I have licenses for six. I have to um, evaluate them. I'm using air quotes right now. So I need to have lots of streaming services so I can play it with all my music cast products here at home. But this gives you all kinds of flexibility, whatever style of music you want, whatever, uh, whatever app you're comfortable with, uh, the, the most popular ones are compatible with the music cast uh, platform. Uh, we talk about whole home audio. It's not whole home audio unless we can share that content. So you get all the streaming music that you want, but you need to be able to share it with other rooms around the house. And with Yamaha's Music Cast system, we can share whatever you're playing on any Music Cast device in your home. You can share it with any other music cast device. So in this instance here, I have a home theater. I'm streaming Pandora in the, in the living room, but I have a sound bar in the bedroom and I got some speakers you know, sp scattered throughout the house. I can link them all together and share the content with all the uh, music cast devices in the home. Now that means I don't have to carry my phone with me in my pocket and listen to telephone speakers. So that's that's nice. Another advantage of MusicCast is not just for streaming music. I mean, that's probably your primary use for it. Uh, it's kind of what I do most of the time, what most of most of us at Yamaha are streaming music pretty much all the time. Uh, but it's much more than that. Any content that you have, so go back to that home theater uh, example in the previous slide. That receiver, I might be watching football. And I can't wait to be watching football. Um, and when it's halftime, you know, I might want to go cook a hot dog or out in the barbecue, or I might want to do a little work or something like that. I can share that audio track from the broadcast with every other music cast device. So if you're watching sports, if you're watching movies, if you have friends over and you got, uh, you know, you're binge watching something, you can spread that sound throughout the whole home. It's not just uh, dedicated to music. So it's whatever's playing on any music cast device can play with everything else. Uh, app control is a must anymore. It's, you have to have your app, you have your phone with you all the time. So we have to have a, a real simple control so we can select the music, uh, linking rooms together. Uh, you can control all the volume. So if you have eight devices linked up and they're all playing the same thing spread out throughout the whole house, one volume setting on the app, I can make the whole house go up and down. I can mute the whole house so if the phone rings. I can mute the whole home. Uh, so it's all the control from, from one simple device. Now, app control is really cool and it's a lot of fun, but nothing beats voice control. <laughs> we have to have any more with whole home audio. We have to be able to voice control it. So whether you're you're into Alexa, Google, Apple AirPlay 2. If uh, you're into any of those, whichever platform you're comfortable with, the MusicCast app will take care of that for you. So um, that's kind of the background of whole home audio. We listen to more music all the time. We want to listen to it in more places. We want to listen to more content in more places. MusicCast, uh, with its whole home audio capabilities, allows us to do that. Now I'm going to go into streaming just for a couple minutes here and not get into it. Yeah, not too much detail. Um, so Napster, Spotify, you know, these ones on this first page that you see right here on the left hand side, Cobas, um, they're all great. Uh, they all kind of have their own little specialty things. Some have uh, making playlists is easier. Some have better stations, so you can get a genre and just listen to that station, and it'll give you all types of artists from that genre. Um, so, you know, different different services have different specialties. Now, 
you're probably not like me. You probably are not going to have six or seven different streaming services that are licensed to you. You'll pick one or two that you're comfortable with the interface and you're comfortable with the, the playlist and format and stuff like that. What's cool about MusicCast is I have six um, six services on this first screen on this particular model right here. But if I only have uh, Spotify, I can remove those tiles or I can hide those other tiles that says Naps or Cobus Title and Deezer. Those can go away. So now I have simplified the application. So my phone can have the apps I listen to. My wife's phone can have my apps or she can have hers. Maybe she doesn't listen to Cobus and I do. So we can remove Cobus for that. So it's real, real easy to, to modify uh, your listening preferences with the MusicCast app. Streaming services, Spotify, Connect, Title D, Pandora, all this, that Amazon Music is uh, is fairly recent. Um, one thing that's fun about MusicCast, you know, we've been doing this, you know, for over five years now, and uh, we're into our sixth year of it, uh, is it keeps evolving and keeps getting better and better. Roughly about every three or four, now it's down about four months now, kind of, is we do an app update because our engineers are always working on this, refining the experience, making a better experience, giving us more capabilities, giving us more reliability, all kinds of things along those lines. So the music cast that you bought four years ago is way better now just because of the firmware updates that we've been doing to this. And we're going to see a little bit later on that MusicCast is part of the Yamaha uh, DNA because it does, uh, it's in a, a ton of our products. You're going to see over 89 products we built over the last five and a half years are capable of MusicCast. It's in our product. It's not a device that you buy to do MusicCast with. It's in Yamaha products that you're going to buy anyway, whether it's surround sound or stereo listening um, or whatever it happens to be. Um, so in 2015, we started out, and these are the streaming services. I kind of do this for a disclaimer because if you have an older uh, Yamaha product and you're going, I can't get Amazon Music. How come Phil told me I could and you can't? Um, in 2018, so a little over two years ago, we launched an updated um, platform. It's not really a platform. The chipset was different, and it gave us a little bit more flexibility. So from 2018 on, we've added these extra services, Cobuzz and Amazon, and we're always looking to add more. Uh, with the Alexa control, you, we can do tune in, iHeartRadio, and things uh, just with voice control. It's not even part of the app. You just talk to uh, your Alexa dot and you can get tune in radio the stations off iHeart or things like that so that's um there's kind of a it's not a break everything's compatible backwards it's just the newer products uh, you get a few more features uh, as we go along uh, wireless connectivity is it's Wi-Fi I might take a second here uh, probably 90% of music cast devices are on your Wi-Fi network. They're, they can all be hardwired. And actually, if if you live in an apartment or in a high rise or something like that, where there's tons of Wi-Fi from people, your neighbors and things like that, uh, you may want to hardwire the device you can. So anything that's closer to the router, uh, run a Cat5 cable into it. It's going to be more reliable than, than just Wi-Fi blasting uh, around the house. Um, and there's some tips on Wi-Fi, and that's kind of another presentation altogether. On how do we get a robust Wi-Fi system? So it works on Wi-Fi. You want to have a robust Wi-Fi system, and once you have that, then you have a rock-solid foundation, and everything's going to work awesome. Uh, Spotify Connect is a, another uh, way where the Spotify app, not you know separate from the MusicCast app, if you just listen to Spotify all the time, you can use Spotify to uh, play music through your MusicCast devices. And of course, for the Apple folks, AirPlay 2 is compatible with the 2018 models in Ford. And of course, all the MusicCast models have Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth is kind of common and there's like, uh, everyone does Bluetooth, you know, what's the big deal about that? Well, we do it a little bit different. 
So you can stream from your phone or your laptop, whatever device, to any Yamaha MusicCast device that you have in your home. You might just have one speaker, so you use Bluetooth to that. But all of our Bluetooth devices, we can also stream Bluetooth from the device. It has a transmit function on it. And I guess the application for that would be is uh, if you had a sound bar in your bedroom. And so you're sitting there, you're listening to the news or watching a movie or something like that. And then uh, one of you wants to go to sleep. All you do is from the app, hit broadcast Bluetooth and pick up your headphones from the nightstand, put them on your head, and it will broadcast whatever you're watching on television to your Bluetooth headphones. So it's just, it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, it does have a neat application. Uh, you just have to know about it. And if it's there, you probably have a set of Bluetooth headphones laying around or earbuds somewhere in the house. Uh, you can use it with all your MusicCast devices. So that's a little bit uh, what we're talking about with uh, streaming services and, and things like that. Uh, Joel, I think now might be a time if any questions have come in, we might want to try to. Uh, yeah, we got a couple. Some that I think are, are real appropriate for this section. One stems right off of the comments about Bluetooth transmission. And Leo had a question about YouTube music, asking if that was gonna be a capability. So I think we could point out to Leo that, you know, we're always looking at capabilities of different music streaming services. We've got all the most popular ones right now and, and aren't planning to close the door on anymore. But if there are ones that you really like and are beholden to that you don't see on the list, Bluetooth is always an option to stream those. Um, and some even have um, jacks in that you can plug in from your device if, if that's the route that you yeah, want to hardware. go to. Yeah. Um, one that maybe you could address here, Phil, um, is from Raul. He was asking if a music cast AV receiver um, can transmit the music and audio to another music cast receiver so that if I'm playing something in my living room, if I happen to have that set up in a gaming environment one floor lower, one floor lower would I be able to listen to the same audio in both of those setups? Absolutely. That's, that's the part of the music cast ecosystem. Anything that is broadcast, anything that you're listening to on any music cast device, can be broadcast, the, the audio can. Let's be clear on that, you can't broadcast video. It's music cast, not AV cast. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what it's made for. So if you're gaming in one room and you wanna hear it around the house or whatever, that's, that's what it's made for. Cool, and that would work the same way if I'm saying watching uh, my favorite sports team when they return to action. If I wanted to send that to another room or maybe even the kitchen, any problems there? That's what it's made for. That's exactly what it will do. All right, now if my wife's in the kitchen and she wants to hear a little bit of it, say when uh, the Super Bowl's on and a commercial comes on, to know it's starting, but she doesn't want it at full blast, do you kind of have to have everything set equally or are you able to adjust by room? No, and that's uh, that's the neat thing. Everyone's app, you can just uh, grab the room and you have a separate slider. You, ha you have one master slider for the whole house. So if I have six devices, I can turn the house up and down uh, simultaneously. But if there's a specific room I wanna adjust, let's say the kitchen in your application, um, she can just pick up her phone, hit the volume and turn the kitchen down or turn the kitchen up in, independent of what else is going on in all the other rooms. So it's all real right, flexible cool. that way, yeah. Cool, that solves a lot of our related questions. I think we can save one about zone two for when we get into configuration. So. I'll hit yeah, mute and you can keep going here, Phil. Cool, thank you, Joel. All right, let's talk, uh, we're gonna spend a little bit of time on the app because I wanna dig into this because this is what you're going to interface with most often. Uh, you'll do voice uh, sometimes, uh, you know, in, for average everyday listening, voice control is just fine. But you're gonna find there's, there's so much stuff you can play with in the app to customize it for your home. I want to spend a little bit of time on it. Um, this is our logo. It's just a pretty slide. Music cast app. We're up to version 4.1. And I started, we started out with 1.0. So we've upped our, upped our game. Now, the reason I want to talk about this part of the app right here, it's a free app. It's available on Google Play and Apple App Store. Uh, it's free download. Uh, it has a full demo mode. So 
even if you don't have MusicCast right now and you're considering, well, maybe this might work for me or something like that. Let me, I wish I could check it out a little further. Uh, download the app. It has a full demo mode on it. So you can link rooms together. You can check, so you just can't control anything but because there's nothing in your system. But you can see what the, what the app does and how it works and you get comfortable to see if that's something that'll fit into your lifestyle. So the, the full demo mode, that is a uh, real key. They put a lot of resources into the demo mode just so people can test drive it. You, know, you don't buy a new car without a, without a little test drive and that's what the, the demo mode does for us. Uh, the screen on your left, that's kind of your home screen. So every time you open up the MusicCast app, uh, it'll come up to the screen that has your rooms on. So all the rooms that are available. In this case right here, there's only three rooms on here. Uh, we can have up to 32 rooms. I'll get in some detail on that in a little bit. So if you look at the TV room, you see that's kind of black and white down the lower left down there. That's because the power's off on that room. When the power comes on, the picture comes out and it's in color and uh, we can do that. So you pick a room, so you select this, maybe it's just I wanna play something in the kids room. Then the next screen that pops over, oh, I guess I wanna do it in the family room because that's what it says. So, and then it pops over and then it shows, so you pick a room and then you pick a source, whether it's uh, TV, your HDMI input or one of your streaming services. Uh, and then you pick favorites and recents and all that stuff. Um, and you can customize everything. That's that's the part that's really fun about this app is you can play around with it uh, whenever you have a little extra time. You can use it right out of the box, or right off the download, I guess, and, but you can customize it. So those pictures of the den and the kids room and the TV room, uh, there's a built-in library of photos and things that you can put in there, or you can go to the room and take a picture of it yourself. Uh, so if it's your little Susie in the kids room, uh, you can take a close up of Susie's face, and put that as the picture. So you're not selecting rooms, you're selecting that person. So it's uh, really fun to, to play around with. Uh, getting over onto the right hand side where the apps are, uh, like I said, we can remove or hide the stuff that we aren't using. So we'll have a, you know, a, a simpler interface. Uh, but we also rearrange stuff. So maybe I listen to title all the time. I hardly ever listen to Napster. I can just slide the title tile over to the upper right. So it's right there. Every time I start up the, the MusicCast app, it'll get me right to where I want to go. And let's talk about, oops. Okay, let's talk about room linking. And before we get into room linking, uh, you know, the beauty of this thing is, so in the TV room, I think it was Raul's question, you know, he's gaming in there or something like that, and he wanted to hear that sound, let's say up in the bedroom, there's another game system up there, or just there's a sound bar in the, in the upstairs bedroom that's up there. So we can link the uh, sound up to that room, so or out into the kitchen, or wherever it happens to be. Now, we can link a bunch of rooms together. So I can make every, in this little house right here, this four room house, I can make all four rooms play the same thing. Or I can make two rooms play something and the other two rooms can play something else. Or I can have three rooms play the same thing and I can have the fourth room do something else. Every room can be individual or it can be linked together. And there's going to be, I'm going to show you a chart here in a second. It might be uh, uh, an easy way to go. Uh, we kind of would like to limit it to 20 uh, devices in a group. And I'll, sh I'll show you a chart. It might be easier to understand when you see it in the chart. So let me just show it to you that way in a second. So this was back to that home screen again that we talked about when you first turn it up. Uh, that little rooms tab in the center, you tap on that and you can mute all the rooms, you can turn all the rooms on, you can turn all the rooms off. So it's real quick access to, you know, it's time to go to bed, let's shut the house off. Um, the little button on the right that says settings, and that gets you into all your customization. That's where you can change pictures, you can change labels. So where it says den up there, maybe it's not a den, maybe it's a sitting room. You can put in whatever label that you like. But the important thing is that on the left-hand side and the upper, the room linking, that little chain link 
thing. You'll see that in a couple different places throughout the app. It's it's right here on the on the home screen, but it's also when you're down in listening to music and things like that, you you're sitting in the den listening to some music and you go, you know, I want to go to the kitchen and make a sandwich. So I just from the den um, screen, there's another little link on that one. I just hit the link and then it just says, what do you want to link it to? And then I can click on the different rooms. So in this case right here, I was in the living room listening. I hit that link button and then I have the list of all the rooms that are available. Now someone just went ahead and checked in all four of these, but maybe I only wanted to link it to the kitchen and I just hit okay and it's done. So that's how simple it is to link and unlink the devices. Okay, now I gotta do a little bit of a disclaimer here. So the MusicCast system currently can have 32 devices. So you can have 32 receivers, you can have 32 little spe uh, speakers, uh, you can have 32 stereo receivers, you have 32 sound bars if you want to. So we can have 32 system or 32 devices in your home. And I just labeled them MusicCast 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can kind of get where I'm going at with this. There's 32 devices there. If I want to link them together, uh, there is a limitation. I can only link 20 rooms together at a time. So if MusicCast 1 in the upper left-hand corner, that was the den, let's say, I can link it to 19 more devices. So there's 20 in that one group. Now there's still 12 units, these purple ones and the gray ones off to the right. Uh, they're just sitting there. They're not part of that first group, but they're fully capable and functioning. So I can listen to different things in every one of those rooms or where it says MusicCast or MC21, the dark purple one, I can make that the master and link it to 22, 23, 24, all the way up to 27. So that's another little separate group. And then uh, I have uh, what the five other ones uh, is, a, is a third group. So you can break it up into kind of as many groups as you want. Now there is one caveat. If you have the older, the original music cast, you can only link up to 10 devices at a time. So if that's your master, so music cast one was an older model receiver, I can only link it to 10. But if it's one of the 2018, one of the newer models, where I said well, that was kind of that line break there, if I made that the master, then I can link it to 20. So as long as the master is, is one of the newer models, it can hold 20 devices. And it doesn't matter what the device, if it's old or new, as long as it's linked to a master, that's, that's part of a new one. Yeah, voice control, it's real simple. You can link and unlink rooms, volume up, down, you know, Alexa, link the kitchen to the living room. Boom. Alexa, turn the volume down in the kitchen. Boom. It's done. It just, it just works. So we can do all the, all the, um, uh, all the basic functions with voice, Apple and, and Google Assistant as well. Um, it would be, you can do it. Let's say I wanted to link 32 rooms to the kitchen. I can do that with voice control. Uh, it will be a very, it'd be a lot faster for me to pick up the app and, and link 32 rooms by hitting those little check boxes than it would be to try to talk to it and get it to, to go all the way down through there. So how do we do voice control? Well, once you set up all your devices, and I'll show you that a little bit later. I think I have a slide that shows shows how to do that. <clears throat> Once we get all the devices onto the music cast system, then you go to that little gears that's in the upper right, and that's your settings button. When you drop when you hit that button, you'll scroll down, and you'll see Amazon Alexa set up and Google Assistant set up. So whatever voice automation system you have, you click on that and you put in your credentials and it will link to that voice control device. So it's it's really that simple. It's very, very simple to do. Now, if you have, again, this was, we, oh, sorry, Alexa. <laughs> oh, that was Google, that was my phone. Uh, so it was Siri uh, via AirPlay 2, that, that's in the, the newer product. So we can do Siri voice control with that. And that's only in the, the newer products moving forward. 
adding new devices, how do you add a device? Um, this is kind of where you start out at, at this slide back here towards the end of the app. But it's uh, you, you get a new device. Let's say I have a receiver, and then for my birthday, someone gives me a, a little sound bar that I want to put in the kitchen. All you do is you go, you hit the little settings button in the upper right. It takes you to the uh, settings page, and at the very top, it says add new device. You tap that, and then you walk over to the device, and they all have a music cast button on them. You press and hold that button, uh, just like it shows in the picture there. Uh, depending on the device, it will show you a different, a different image. You press and hold it for five seconds. It goes into a pairing mode. Uh, it'll ask you a question on the app. You say yes. Boom, it's hooked up. It'll say, what do you want to name this room? What picture do you want to use for this room? And you're done. It's that simple. We do it all the time. So I want to talk about the configuration. Oh, you know what? Let's let's uh, see if there's any questions on the app real quick before we jump into this configurations. Joel, is there anything new popping up? Yeah, yeah, and a lot of it uh, revolves around kind of how it works with other apps. So um, we're talking a little bit about the MusicCast app. Um, there's another app that we offer that's been around a little bit longer um, called the AV Controller app. Mm -hmm. um, some people were just wondering what some of the differences were, and I think with this latest app update, um, that's a pretty easy question. So I'll toss yeah. that softball over to you. Yeah, thank you. That was that's an easy one. Um, <clears throat> Yamaha for years has had a app called a um, AV controller app, and that way you could get into the device and control an AV receiver, and you could do some very sophisticated stuff. It's almost like having the TV and the remote control and all the menu systems and all that stuff in front of you. You get some real detail control with it. Uh, MusicCast was a little more casual in its control up until six weeks ago when we had the, the latest firmware update. Uh, so now the latest firmware, uh, MusicCast at version 4.1, now has much of the AV controller functions ported over to the app. So now even from the MusicCast app, I can dig down one level, open up the AV controller app, and then I have real detailed control of my AV receiver. And I think you're gonna find, this, this is one thing that's really cool about having the app control of an AV receiver. Up until this time, if I had to do something on my receiver, I had to go into the TV room, turn the TV on, you know, and then turn the receiver on, then look at the on-screen menu, and then figure out what I want to do with remote control and all that stuff. Now I can do this with the app. The TV never has to come on. I can do it all, and the AV controller app is now uh, integrated into the MusicCast app, or a lot, uh, many, many of the functions are. Cool. Thanks, Phil. i got a couple others for you here on app functionality. When it comes to Alexa, yeah, I triggered mine in my house, too. It was bound to happen. <laughs> uh, will your receiver or other MusicCast-enabled device show up within that app um, as a speaker receiver, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's part of the Alexa, the Alexa cloud in there. So it would show up as a, uh, as a kit, the kitchen or something like that. So if you want, hey, Alexa, turn the kitchen on, that's that's how it would link over to that. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, and if it is a, a speaker through that connected uh, API that we have, you can use her to control that device. By exactly. Yeah, it like, yeah, like we talked about with the TuneIn radio and the iHeart radio, that's not built into the Yamaha platform, but that's in the Alexa platform, and I'll just pour it over to the Yamaha device, yeah. Cool, cool. Then um, that was a question from Philippe, so maybe you in another form. <laughs> uh, we've got another question from Julie, who's wondering about, you know, this is especially prevalent now where many of us are surrounded by a number of people that we're working with and living with in the same household. What if everybody is using the MusicCast app? You have multiple people using it. How does that work? Does that work? It uh, depends on how well you live together. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right now, every everyone can control everything. So um, you need to set up some personal ground rules that when I'm watching TV, you're not going to stream your Pandora into the TV room. And it's re it, you know, it's really pretty easy because you can see what's active and you can see what's what's playing in each one of the rooms. 
but um you know you leave your office and all of a sudden the, the sound bar in your office is fair game for anyone in the house so um it's pretty easy pretty easy to go through so yeah yeah and that can be a benefit too i mean there's there's been times where I've, I've had my youngest son playing music too loud in his bedroom and I don't even ask him to turn it down. I just turn it down myself. So yes. there's, there's some yeah. benefits of everyone being able to see what's going on for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, with that, let's go into configurations. We've got more questions coming in, so we'll certainly do a catch-all near the end. Yep. Um, and we'll start with ones related to configurations after you go over that section. Cool. So let's, uh, yeah, we'll do uh, configurations. This is only going to take a little bit, and then we'll kind of finish up with all all the, the final questions, and then we'll do a quick recap after that. So that'll be good. I think I mentioned earlier that we've had over 89 models are compatible with MusicCast. So what makes Yamaha's MusicCast system uh, unique in the industry? There, there's other multi-channel uh, or multi-room whole home audio systems out there. And what makes Yamaha's unique, I believe, it comes you know, from our music heritage. Like your, whatever your listening style is or whatever you need for your home, you need a home theater. So the home theater needs to have music cast. Maybe I only like two channel listening. So I have a two channel stereo receiver that I do a lot of hi-fi listening with. That is music cast. We have sound bars that are music cast. Uh, we have a turntable. The Vinyl 500 is the most awesome device there is. We use it in the office, and we can't wait to get back to the office. So we uh, can link our vinyl player. It's music cast. It's Wi-Fi. It's not wired to anything. It's sitting on a cabinet in one of our cubicles there with a huge stacks of well stacks of albums. And you throw an album on, and it goes to every device that's at everyone's cubicle. So the music has vinyl. So no matter what your listening style, maybe you only want background music. Okay, so we have the music has 50 in the lower right. We have a beautiful speaker, and then we have a smaller version that the music has 20. But there's tons of models, and the reason we do so many models, we're not building music has products. We're putting music has into the products that we would naturally build for your listening enjoyment. Uh, to date, we have over 49 AV receivers that are compatible with music, music cast. Um, six hi-fi hi-fi models. We got uh, stereo receivers. Uh, some of those, a couple of them are a little bit, you know, are the first gen, and some of them are the second generation. And of course, that turntable. That's really something you got to check out. Uh, there's a link at the end. So when you go to the Yamaha AV web, Yamaha.com/AV. Uh, click on the music cast and it'll show you some of the unique products that we have in there. The, the vinyl is really, really cool. So if you're having a party or something like that and have people just bring their vinyl over, set the turntable up on a coffee table, plug it in the wall, and you're broadcasting to all the music cast devices throughout the home. It's truly uh, a lot of fun. Uh, for custom stuff, we have multi-channel. That's uh, the quad streamer on the left-hand side right there is a four zone. So it has eight eight stereo amplifiers in it, four zones, and they're all music cast. So I can have a different stream. So if I have a rack of equipment, I don't need to have individual receivers. I can use the quad streamer. If you have a smaller application, we got the WXC50 and the A50 amp and preamp. So those are two-channel devices on the right-hand side. So if you just need to add good sound to one room and you got a nice set of speakers, maybe use the A50 on the, the lower right that's right there. And then of course we have speakers, the MusicCast 50 on the left, the thing uh, just really pounds it, it cranks, it sounds really good. Um, and the MusicCast 20 on the lower right. But also with all of our newer models of AV receivers is compatible with our Sub 100. It's a MusicCast subwoofer, so any of our AV receivers from 2018 forward, you don't need to have the subwoofer in your room tethered to the receiver with a subwoofer cable. We can run it through the MusicCast system. I'll show you another application for that sub in uh, just a second. And of course we have had six models of sound bars available. Currently it's the uh, Bar 400 is the latest model, and that's the one you'll see probably on the website. <clears throat> 
This next slide, I just throw this in there just because I think this is the most awesome thing about Yamaha. Uh, we have 20 models of pianos, the Discolier and Spire, that are compatible with MusicCast. So people buy $100,000 pianos that sit in the great room, but the only time you can enjoy them is when they're in the great room. We can actually broadcast the piano to all the other MusicCast devices throughout the home. So if you're streaming uh, piano content into the player, uh, into the reproducing piano, the disc clavier Inspire, the piano will be playing great in the great room, but you won't hear it throughout the whole house. We can put that in the MusicCast system and control it uh, and access it through the MusicCast app. That is just a mind-blowing thing to me that a grand piano we can share throughout the whole home. It's really cool. Now, two of the features that are uh, kind of new this year <clears throat> uh, with, the, with the latest models, we talk about MusicCast Stereo. We talked about these devices individually, but the, the MusicCast 50, upper in the upper left, I, those white speakers that are up there, uh, they sound great on their own. They really fill a room. But maybe I don't want a full set of speakers. I don't want a receiver. But I do want to have great stereo sound. And I want some deep bass. Well, what we can do is we can pair those together in stereo mode. So now I can separate them, put them on a bookshelf or a wall unit or something like that so I can get some good separation. But then I can also music cast connect them to the subwoofer. So now I have a 2.1 system. So I have stereo speakers with, I can run them just stereo alone, or I can add a subwoofer later on for more bass to fill bigger room. Maybe you got a room with vaulted ceiling. You know, it's got tons of volume in it. Uh, maybe you need a little more bottom in to fill that room up, to fill that volume of space. We can add in stereo pair, listen to them in stereo, and then add the subwoofer to fill in the bottom end. One other thing that's unique throughout all the MusicCast uh, line, is, uh, the newer AV receivers from the 2018 Ford, is we can do MusicCast surround. All the years I've been selling surround sound, that's always been the biggest barrier, is getting wires to the back of the room and getting speakers to the back of the room. Without speakers in the back of the room, you do not have surround sound. You have to have that. But there's tons of applications where it's just really difficult. People are renting. People are leasing. Uh, you're in an apartment. You can't run wires through the wall. You can't put speakers in the ceiling. Um, you know, you're kind of stuck. Uh, so then a lot of people just go to sound bars because then you get a virtual surround and it, it kind of works. Um, but with the MusicCast speakers, the newer receivers in the 2018 Ford, we can configure them in surround sound format. And so now we just plug these into the wall. We link them up with the MusicCast app. Now I have a 5.1 system, or we can even actually grow on that. Uh, here's just an image. It also uh, connects with that, that MusicCast bar 400, that sound bar that was MusicCast that we showed a little earlier. Uh, if I want a little more discrete surround capability, I can put a pair of the MusicCast 20s in the back and run those as my surround speakers. So I think that's what I have for content now. I just have, uh, let's finish up some of the, the final questioning and then we'll do a quick recap and then I'll show you another web link that you sh should uh, copy down and then we're, we'll be out of here, I think. All right, cool. So everyone continue to send your questions in. We do have a couple minutes here and we've got a couple that we'll start with. So you've got some lead time to think and type your questions in. Uh, a question that came in from Leo, Phil, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's about maybe the best way that you can uh, stream Spotify uh, to the second zone without interrupting the main zone. And maybe before that, you could just give a real quick primer on, on what that means to have like zone two audio. Oh, through the AV receiver or through the music cast. So uh, with, with second zone, yeah. Yeah, how you would just go about configuring that with an AV receiver. Okay, yeah. So, in the okay, most of our AV receivers are two-zone receivers, and that's like traditional whole home audio is the way we used to do it. So that you got a 5.1 system in your theater. It's got a couple extra amplifiers. I can either do part of my theater or I can take those extra speakers and run them to the patio, some outdoor speakers in the backyard, uh, some all weather speakers. But I have to, I get to wire them uh, to that, so that works just fine. 
What's cool with MusicCast is when you connect a AV receiver to the MusicCast system, it will go, hey, this is an RXA 1080. I recognize this. This is a two zone receiver. Do you want to use it as two zones or are you going to use all seven channels just for your theater room? If you say, yeah, I want the option of turning on zone two so I can you know, stream Spotify out to the, the second zone as well, then we're able to do that. So it works as a, um, uh, a multi-zone controller. <clears throat> one of the things that have each one though there's one caveat to that if we're going to use that for music cast and zone two it only has one streaming connection in it one network connection card in it so if i'm watching sports in the main zone that's fine i can turn on zone two and i can stream over there i cannot if i'm streaming in the main zone and i want to stream something different in the second zone uh, that you can't do. That's where you would need separate music cast devices uh, just to fill that that application. Well, and a kind of related question. You might have answered it, Phil, but the, just in the, the the way that it was asked, I want to make sure that it's answered. Uh, David had asked if you can control wired speakers with music cast. Would you just talk about how you'd be able to do that? Yeah, uh, the wired speakers now. I showed you that there was one slide in there that had the custom amplifiers and it had the quad streamer, it had the big flat thing, and then it had the, uh, on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, we have uh, the WXA50. So that is a two-channel streaming amplifier. It's nine inches by nine inches by about two, two inches tall, uh, one and a quarter, and then it has some feet on it. Um, I can put that anywhere. So if you own some speakers, let's say you have a nice set of speakers somewhere and you want to upgrade those speakers into, oh man, I want to be able to stream Spotify and Pandora and all that stuff. I've got these speakers. I don't know how to do that. You can get a WXA50 to control those. Now we can take it a step further. If you have an older system, let's say it's a, a vintage Yamaha system, it's a great two-channel system, works just great, uh, but it's 15 years old, and that's wired, connected to wired speakers. Then you get what's called the WXC. It's a preamp music cast. That's the other, it's the, the similar size. It's 9 by 9 by, by 2 inches. Um, I would connect that as an input. So now I've updated that system to modern streaming services, plus I get to keep you know, the vinyl and the whatever else uh, sources I was using with that one. So yes, there's ways that's, we have so many products that you can do, whatever you can come up with, there's a MusicCast solution for that. Excellent, and that summarizes just a couple questions that we've received about people's specific products of, would it work with this? Could I use it with that? Um, there's always the, you know, the kind of the more legal answer of maybe, but I'm not a lawyer, so I don't want to say maybe. But you addressed it there. I mean, there's certainly ways to get things to work. There's always the ideal setup situation, but if there is older equipment, you really want to make it part of a, a more modern smart home setup. We certainly have ways to, to help you going about that too. Um, I know there's still some other questions, and unfortunately, we're running out of time, so we will do our best to answer those offline. Um, remember, we shared that email address, and I think that's going to be included in your recap here, Phil. So yeah, I'll turn it yes, back it to you to, to bring us home. Very good. All right. So uh, again, thanks everyone for uh, spending a little bit of time with us. I appreciate this. Uh, real quick recap on what we did. What is home, home audio? Why you need it? Everybody needs it because it's really cool and it's a lot of fun. Uh, you link rooms together, you show content, uh, app control, voice control. It just makes, you're gonna find out that you listen to music way more than you ever did. I've been with, you know, you see I've been with Yamaha for many years. I have tons of gear. A lot of it is really old stuff. Um, but when we set up our MusicCast system uh, five years ago, I have like quadrupled the amount of time that we were listening to music at home just because it's so simple and we have so much access to everything. It, streaming services, um, Alexa uh, services. So, you know, you saw all the streaming services that we have. Alexa, we got iHeart and, and uh, TuneIn Radio. The Bluetooth, the in and the output on all the MusicCast devices is really cool and it's kind of unique. Uh, we looked really very kind of quickly, kind of glanced over the app. We can spend a lot of time on that. Uh, but that's why you download the demo mode 
and then you can dig into the menus and you see what kind of things are under the hood of the app and how you would use it and how it would work in your home environment. And of course, it shows you how to do voice control, master volumes, and independent volume controls and things along those lines. Configurations, uh, that's where Music Cash shines. Whatever your listening experience desires are, there's a product for you. Um, you probably, you might even have Yamaha products right now that you didn't even know had Music Cast in them. They have Music Cast most likely if it's been in the last five years. So, whatever your listening preference, whether it's a soundbar, serious two channel listening, or just great surround sound, or maybe just background music with a speaker, there's something there for you. Uh, the the Music Cast vinyl, that is a totally cool thing. Check that out online just because it's so unique and it's just it's a lot of fun when you have other music cast product. We can link things up in stereo and don't forget the wireless surround because if you have a, a situation and they come up all the time where you can't put, it's difficult, it's challenging, let's say, to put surround speakers in the back of the room. Music cast is a solution to that. So that's um, um, go online. Uh, if you got more questions on MusicCast, we have tons of FAQs, we have tons of explainers, there's videos in there that talk about MusicCast. Just do a, once you get into the website, search on MusicCast, and it'll take you to all kinds of resources uh, to learn more about MusicCast, its capabilities, and what it can do in your home. And that's at yamaha.com forward slash AV. With that, thank you all again for showing up, and we hope to see you at future webinars, and we hope it was informative, and we enjoy to see you back again. So thank you very much.